Live from Palo Alto, it's theCUBE. Covering Women Transforming Technology 2017. Brought to you by VMware. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the Women Transforming Technology Conference held at VMware here in beautiful Palo Alto, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. I'm joined by Yan Bin Lee, who is the Senior Vice President and General Manager for Storage and Availability here at VMware. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Rebecca. I'm so excited to meet you, actually. I've done quite a few uh, CUBE you're, interviews. You're a CUBE veteran, <laughs> yes, I know. Uh, you're yes. the first the female host I got to talk to, so really excited meeting you. Well, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's a ple the pleasure's all mine. Thank um, you. So Business Insider mm -hmm. calls you one of the most powerful women engineers in the world mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, it's exciting to, to be talking to you. Um, VMware is committed to diversity mm -hmm. and inclusion. We're here at a Women Transforming Technology Conference. Yeah. You're hosting the conference. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about your experience and what you're involved in, in terms mm -hmm. of that emphasis on diversity and inclusion here. Yes, yeah, certainly uh, being part of uh, VMware and certainly being a, a female engineering leader myself, um, I this is very uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, my uh, experience, actually, uh, involvement in women uh, leadership uh, initiative started uh, many years ago when I was actually based in China. You know, my career at VMware, I've been here for nine you years. You led the Chinese uh, operation. Yeah, I was leading the China uh, engineering operation in China for a few years. And when I was based in China, I started a series of uh, women technology conference in Beijing. So we started in 2011, and that quickly turned into an industry event, kind of very similar to what's going on here at uh, uh, you know, uh, Women Transforming uh, Technology. So this has been uh, certainly close to my heart, and I've been involved in you know, starting uh, the initiative in China, and uh, when I moved back to Palo Alto, uh, I have been part of the uh, uh, Women Initiative, I was part of a dialogue circle, and uh, this year we expanded the initiative, or since last year, from just the women focus to now a much broader diversity focus, and certainly, you know, being Chinese myself, I'm also representing the uh, Chinese community at VMware. We have a, um, a, a Chinese at VMware a circle uh, that you know uh, create that community feeding for all the Chinese and Chinese Americans working at VMware. Yeah. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about what you've mm -hmm. observed with the mm -hmm. women in China and yeah. the women here in Silicon Valley? Are the issues the same? Is the culture similar? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. are your experience? I think there is a lot more similarity than differences. You know, ch uh, China there has been a stronger emphasis of. Uh, uh, women contributing to the society, you know, for the past, you know, 50, 60 years. So you see a higher percentage of women working. You see a higher, slightly higher percentage of uh, women in tech. But the issue are still the same. You know, how we deal with stereotype of women, especially how we overcome, you know, unconscious bias and how we overcome the uh, lack of women in technology and lack of women in leadership. I think these issues definitely transcend. Uh, culture and uh, uh, and community. It was interesting. Uh, we hosted an APJ uh, discussion on diversity and in, in the, China in in, uh, in, in uh, what I, uh, in Sydney. So okay. this was part okay. of our APJ uh, initiative, and there were tables of people from different countries talking about the uh, the women issue, the the gender issue, and uh, the, the simple question was, oh, is there a glass ceiling in your country? And I guess every country's answer was yes except for the country, um, the table of Japan, because their answer was, they didn't have a glass seating, they had a steel seating. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, but you, know, you get the point is, um, yeah, this is right. a issue that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, and do you th mm -hmm. did you find that your Chinese mm -hmm. colleagues in China mm -hmm. were as um, mobilized to mm -hmm. work on them and to, and to, and to, and to make changes? Yeah, I think uh, definitely uh, you see that coming down from the leadership level. Uh, I think uh, when you have initiatives like this, often uh, sometimes you have grassroots initiatives, uh, but it's much more important to up-level that to a business focus. And I think that is what VMware is doing by starting VM Women several years ago and now extending that to VM inclusion. Uh, at VMware, the leadership team definitely see this as a business imperative rather than just something we want to do good to the society. So there is a, a balance of trying to do good but also trying to do smart. You know, how we move the needle from a business outcome point of view. You know, we've been very open about our diversity data. We've been tracking them as part of leadership 
uh, MBOs. So um, I'm excited to see the levels of investment and emphasis uh, that we as a company is putting on. As mm -hmm. a leader, you mm -hmm. are a senior mm -hmm. vice president here. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that you are uh, you're a woman, mm -hmm. you're, you're a Chinese woman, but, you, but, there uh -huh. are also, but we also know that mm -hmm. we are not immune just because mm -hmm. we're women to subtle biases, right. to, to, to discrimination. Mm -hmm. How do you work on yourself and your day-to-day -day mm -hmm. uh, practice as a leader and a, and a manager? Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, it's, you know, along our career, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, things like, you know, sexism or how people uh, apply, you know, unconscious bias uh, toward women and, you know, certain stereotype view of, of uh, women. I think we've all experienced that. And just, uh, you know, I can think of lots of examples on a daily basis. I was having dinner with a male coworker, which is a very important way for us to build, um, you know, strong relationships. relationships. Yes. And, you know, as we were eating, we were mistaken as on a date, you know, this, 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 all, you know, all these subtle right. things that remind you uh, somehow, you know, people see women not necessarily, you know, when if, even if you're having a business setting, they tend to not assume right. the same. So, right. uh, so I think that's uh, happening um, all the time. So my approach toward this has been recognizing that it happens and have a good way to. Um, to diffuse it, and uh, because most people are doing it in a very unconscious way, and when you have a way to diffuse it, you help have a positive impact on that person. I'll give you an example. I think for women, we are constantly introduced as a women something. You know, uh, one year I was uh, speaking at an event, and when we were doing the rehearsal, the a senior leader was introducing me as a women engineering leader. So I just generally said, hey, look, people can tell I'm a woman. <laughs> you don't have to say it. The dress gives it yeah. away. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and that made him become aware. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, the merit you're standing on that stage is not because of your gender or shouldn't be limited by your gender rather than because of the, the message or um, uh, the, uh, the business or the technology that you're bringing to the audience. So, But that's uh, not uh -huh. always easy uh -huh. for people to do, to right. use humor to diffuse uh -huh. the situation. Yeah. Uh, we just heard mm -hmm. from Kara Swisher, yeah. uh, the, the founder of Recode, mm -hmm. and one of her pieces of advice was to mm -hmm. be authentic, be genuine, mm -hmm. be an original. Right. Your Twitter handle is <laughs> YB High Heels. I love yeah. it. I love it. Thank you. Um, but mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. this this mix of professionalism uh -huh. and femininity. Right. Is that yeah. hard to do? Is it hard to pull off? Uh, it is hard, and I have debated um, over and over. You know, where I got my Twitter handle, actually, uh, one of my uh, uh, co-workers, my team members from many years ago, uh, said, uh, said to me, Yanbi, you're the high-tech girl in high heels. <laughs> and I kind of liked it. It felt like very me. But there's been a lot of people telling me, oh, is that really good? Is that, you know, insulting or is that uh, demeaning of uh, the levels of the position, the type of job you have? And I actually felt otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, it is fairly authentic of me. And if people who, you know, uh, I remember when I was leaving one job and uh, the, my male boss was commenting, saying, Yan Bing, you didn't leave very big shoes to, to feel. You live very high shoes. Very to tall <laughs> shoes. <laughs> to feel. So, so, uh, so I'm known uh, to, to like high heels. And, and people, um, and I've also learned that, you know, once you establish your competence, um, you know, this does not become uh, something that is negative. And I've seen uh, increasingly um, your colleagues or co-workers, people around you, want to embrace who you are rather than penalize for, for who you are, as long as you're confident about you know, uh, uh, who, you know, who you are. And so I find that, yeah, I'm you know, having a lot of fun with my Twitter handle. Right, right, <laughs> and, right. Uh, yeah. But, but, uh -huh. uh, but, uh, but as you said, you, mm -hmm. as a woman, if you're, you mm -hmm. have to also have proved yourself mm -hmm. and that you are smart. And just because you mm -hmm. wear high heels and you like high mm -hmm. shoes, you, all, you also can get the job done. Yeah, and, and it's not just high shoes or whatever, you know, uh, shoes of choice that right. people have. I, I think it's, uh, uh, yeah, and we are most comfortable and most successful when we are truly authentic to, 
uh, to ourselves. Being who you are at yeah. work, at home, in, yeah. in your private life. Yeah. So yeah. talk a little mm -hmm. bit, the last mm -hmm. time you were on the show, you mm -hmm. talked about the hyper-converged mm -hmm. world. Can you give us a little <laughs> bit of an overview uh -huh. of what's going on in the software mm -hmm. space and, and what you're working on now? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a very exciting time. You know, certainly as part of the storage uh, business unit, a key initiative uh, that we're working on is uh, vSAN. This mm -hmm. is VMware's leading product in uh, hyper-converged infrastructure. And what we're seeing certainly is this fundamental disruption that's uh, going on in, a, in, a, in storage and data centers and infrastructure in general. And if you think about what is one of the highest growth market segment uh, that's happening in uh, data center and infrastructure today is actually hyper-converged. You know, as a market, this is quickly disrupting the traditional way of delivering storage and it's uh, growing at 60% CAGR for the next few years. And we as a business has has been growing uh, triple digit. Last year, we almost tripled our uh, the size of the business, and we're seeing uh, tremendous customer momentum and uh, tremendous uh, customer adoption. And seeing hyperconverge is really becoming a mainstream way of delivering infrastructure to our customers. So very exciting time. It is exciting, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. yet you, you, it's hard mm -hmm. to think beyond mm -hmm. hyperconverge because yeah. if everything mm -hmm. then becomes one, mm -hmm. what's next? I mean, what do you see down the pipeline mm -hmm. two, two, three years from now in, in yeah. terms of how uh, how businesses deal mm -hmm. with their their storage? Yeah, so certainly, you know, VMware being a leading infrastructure software vendor, you know, we're going through a fundamental transformations of uh, providing not just the best in class software for your data center, you know, how we modernize it, how we provide higher levels of automation and uh, um, um, uh, in the private cloud, but, but you know, increasingly there is a shift towards service-based consumption and, and, and cloud-based uh, delivery of um, infrastructure. So, and I think, uh, I think the same thing is happening uh, in the storage space, uh, you know, certainly, you know, with uh, hyperconverged infrastructure, not only we see a highly high degrees of uh, integration uh, automation, but we're also seeing the same architecture is e extending into the into the cloud. And uh, as we look at the cloud, we also constantly think about, you know, how do we take the value prop of just building the best infrastructure, the best storage. Uh, you know, take that infrastructure play now to um, a application play or a data play. And certainly from the storage side, we're increasingly focusing on how we make data better uh, managed, better governed. You know, how we provide more insights through data. So taking that uh, storage uh, levels of innovation to focus on uh, data, which Understanding what yeah. the data is telling yeah. you and, yeah. and and making that mm -hmm. data work for customers. What, right. what are mm -hmm. you hearing mm -hmm. from customers in terms mm -hmm. of what is keeping them up at night? Um, so, uh, you know, the keeping, our customers are all um, facing the challenge of how they keep up with their business demand. You know, as uh, uh, we look at it, um, every company is now being transformed into digital business and suddenly, the role of uh, IT become so much more interesting and exciting and it's really about enabling business. And so that put demand on you know, how you uh, deliver things in a much more agile fashion. You know, how you uh, keep costs down so that you can invest for really where the business value add is. And you know, how you can ready yourself to you know, adopt a new way of uh, uh, building your application for the future. So these are the typical challenges that we hear uh, from our customer is really to keep up with their business demand. And we are certainly excited to see, you know, VMR is playing a very vital role in, in helping solving our customers' digital transformation challenges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the role of Silicon mm -hmm. Valley mm -hmm. looms large mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in our business mm -hmm. world and, and, mm -hmm. and also just in our, in our imagination. Mm -hmm. What do you think the media get wrong mm -hmm. about Silicon Valley? And, or, or just what, uh -huh. what do you think is, is the line out there that you wish you could dispel in the <laughs> sense of this is not right, this uh -huh. is not the way it happens? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I have lived in uh, Silicon Valley for the past 20 years, except for a few years where I was back in uh, Beijing. You know, I decided to move back because I just feel for being someone in tech, this is really just an amazing place to live in. Yeah. And it's definitely the epicenter. You know, I have three children and I just see, you know, how privileged they're growing up being exposed in, uh, in this very 
dynamic, innovative, vibrant environment. So, so this is what I absolutely love about uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, when you go outside the world, I do think it feels like it's almost like a little ivory tower. Mm -hmm. You know, there is uh, mm -hmm. so much technology, so much access, so much wealth. Um, being created here. Sometimes we tend to forget life is different outside uh, Silicon Valley. Yes. And so, uh, so I think having that perspective is, is very, very uh, important. In terms mm -hmm. of, in ter you mentioned you're a mom, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. what mm -hmm. do you, what mm -hmm. do you wish for your children? I don't mm -hmm. even know if you've got daughters or sons, <laughs> but in terms of, yeah. you know, just getting mm -hmm. back to why mm -hmm. we're here, um, right. breaking barriers is yes, the theme absolutely. of this year's conference: yeah. Women mm -hmm. Transforming Technology. Mm -hmm. What barriers do you want to see broken? for your mm -hmm. kids, for the next generation. Right, I'm excited my kids certainly being part of Silicon Valley and being in this very dynamic environment right now. I think there is a incredible levels of awareness um, in them about what's going on in the world. It was funny, uh, I was just talking to my son, he's got a new uh, shirt and he's 13 years old and I didn't know where the shirt come from because I didn't buy it. That turned out it's the first shirt he bought using his own money and he bought a pink shirt. And he told me that he wanted to get a pink shirt because he wanted to break the gender stereotype. And I certainly wasn't thinking anything like that when I was 13 years old. And this is just being exposed to uh, sort of what's going on in Silicon Valley, being exposed to a, you know, working parents and being exposed to what's happening in the political arena. Yeah. That led him to make a very interesting choice. And I have two 11-year-old uh, girls, and I wish they can grow up. They love technology to begin with. You know, their uh, Christmas uh, wish was to... Um, to build all of their Christmas card using um, um, uh, using some online language, and so we all got all these electronic animated uh, thing for my my girls, and they they want to write video games, and so I wish they grow up in our environment, um, feeling when they have that social awareness, being female does not create a barrier for them to pursue what they love because they genuinely are excited and interested in technology. And I'm hoping that's the environment we're going to help create for them. But I'm also very excited to see at a very young age, they have demonstrated a levels of awareness that I certainly didn't experience mm -hmm. when I was young. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. just speaking mm -hmm. about that level of awareness, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. brought up politics and, mm -hmm. and sort of what's happening on the mm -hmm. national stage. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. much about this administration mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. does go against what are mm -hmm. core values of Silicon mm -hmm. Valley, and particularly with in terms mm -hmm. of immigration, in terms mm -hmm. of um, gender issues, um, mm -hmm. transgender mm -hmm. rights, uh, gay rights. Yeah. Do you do you feel mm -hmm. that Silicon Valley will take a leadership stance on these things and, and mm -hmm. stand up? And, and I think uh, we should. We we should because Silicon Valley has benefited tremendously from the success of our technology and success of our businesses. And so with that, you know, we have incredible power, you know, um, uh, incredible platform. That's and a being, voice. And, and a, a voice, voice being yeah. created out of Silicon Valley. I, I think, yeah, we should play a role in, uh, in advocating for what we believe in, just like, you know, VMware and other uh, partner companies are taking a leadership position to advocating uh, women transforming technology, the role women uh, play uh, in Silicon Valley and in technology at large. I wish, you know, all of the companies here uh, have the willingness and, um, um, you know, to really stand up for what we believe in. Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, given the power that we have and given the influence that we have, not just in this country, but all over the world. Yeah. Jan Bin Lee, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm so glad to have uh, spoken to you. Yes. And thank you for having me back at the Cube. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'm Rebecca Knight. Mm -hmm. We'll be back with mm -hmm. your, the, the Cube's coverage of mm -hmm. women transforming technology here mm -hmm. in Palo Alto. Yeah.